Good evening, skippers, ladies and gentlemen, mein Herr and mein Damen, senor and senoras, mademoiselles and monsieurs. Welcome to the next round of the Melge Cup Finals, featuring United States versus Switzerland. I love the graphics on this game. We'll talk more about that later. In the first round, Switzerland and the United States were close heading into the first mark, and the United States pulled out a sizable lead and held on to the finish to win the first round going away. Today, it's do or die for the Swiss. It's win or go home. No pressure. Once again, the two boats are pretty even. The United States holding only a very slight advantage in spinnakers, the rest of the characteristics of the boats being equal. Well, the skippers have had their final meetings with the crew. The boats have been prepared. They're out in the water. Let's get to it. Today in wonderful Rio de Janeiro, the weather has taken a turn for the worse. It's raining. Winds are force five out of the west, and we're on a low tide. That's good news for the Swiss and for competition, as this should eliminate any issues the Swiss uh, artificial intelligence skipper may have with a spinnaker. From our previous experience, you've seen in the videos that the AI skippers can't handle winds greater than force five. So just basically go stupid and basically destroys what could have been an otherwise good race. So let's take a look at the course. We start at the green line in the middle of the screen there. We beat West, taking the first mark to port. 180 degree turn and hoist the spinnaker for a downhill run to the second mark. Rounding it to starboard, we turn 90 degrees to the south for a reach to the third mark. Take the mark to port and then turn 90 degrees and hoist the spinnaker once again for the downhill run to the finish line. So right now we've got two minutes to go before the start, doing our pre-race maneuvering. Ordinarily, what I like to do is head down toward the committee boat here on port tack, turn around and head back parallel to the line on starboard, and that way I can start the race on the favored tack. As I've said throughout this series, sailboat racing is all about, well, number one, boat speed and how well you sail your boat. Also, right away rules. The two boats are fairly simple. You want to use the rules of the road to your advantage to get the lead against your opponent. Well, you can see as we still got a minute and 15 seconds to go, I'm well away from the committee boat. So I'm gonna try a slightly different tactic this time. I'm gonna go down to the far end of the starting uh, line, take a 180 degree turn and then sail back toward the committee boat. But I wanna be parallel to the starting line. And that way I'm very close to the start as the time ticks down. All I have to do is make a slight turn one way or the other to cross the line and I'm racing. Here I am on port tack, sailing parallel to the start-finish line. You can see the uh, Swiss boat in the uh, distance there. They're on uh, starboard tack, but they're early. Now they're turning away, give themselves a little bit more time and room before the start of the race. We're down to about 30 seconds. Now one thing I can consider doing here is turning around again so I can start on starboard, but I've got a good head of steam up, and I think I'm just gonna continue on this heading and start on port tack. And you can see from the map, little map on the bottom left, the uh, Swiss boat is behind us. They're on starboard. They're not really a factor, so I'm just going to stay on the port tack. There's the gun. And we just crossed the line. You can see that the uh, uh, 
the United States boat was 0.65 seconds behind the Swiss boat. Good start by both skippers. I'm on port heading in one direction. You can see that the uh, Swiss skipper is on starboard heading in the opposite direction. You can see from that little box in the top right, the lead goes back and forth. This is a really close competition. And not only was the, the start very close, but depending on how you catch wind shifts, one boat will move ahead, the other boat will move behind. Uh, very close on this first leg. Right now, my plan is to hold the uh, port tack until I think I can uh, make the first mark on one tack. That will put me on starboard heading to that mark and by rules of the road, get me right away at the first crossing. Now on the top right, you can see that Switzerland is still ranked in first. They just tacked over to port tack, so they lost a little bit of time when they did that. Still holding the lead according to that box on the top right, and you can see that that position flickered back and forth as right now the United States sailed into the lead. Now there's no rules being posted up there because the boats are so far apart the rules really don't apply. As we get closer together, you'll see numbers up there saying which rules apply and whether it's red or green tells me which boat has the right of way. Once again, I love the graphics on this game. You see that wave coming at you and that bow splash right there? Totally awesome. I just, I just really feel like I'm out on the water. Switzerland has retaken the lead. This is a close competition. Hopefully it'll stay that way all the way to the uh, finish line. We haven't had much competition in most of these races. Now one danger of trying to do this in just one tack is wind shift occurs that favors the other boat, there's really not much opportunity for you to make up that difference. So a lot of skippers try to stay more toward the center of the course uh, just to give themselves a safety valve against any uh, unfavorable uh, wind shifts or condition changes uh, that might come along. So we switch over to starboard tack and I'm trying to be able to make this um, mark on this tack see though that my course over the ground is 228 and the course to the next mark is uh, right around 228 but the current is pushing me more to the left so I'm sure if we're going to be able to make this. Now you can see at the top right 10 has shown up uh, as a green number next to the Switzerland boat. Rule 10 applies. Boats on opposite tacks. In this case I'm on starboard. They're on port. I have right away and you can see at the first crossing it's going to be pretty darn close. Now, if there's a conflict here, Switzerland has to give way to me, so I have right of way. It's going to be close. And we pass in front of them. So at the first crossing, we have what looks to be about uh, maybe a four boat length lead. Now the course over the ground is 225, push to the next mark is 231. I can't make that mark unless I get a wind shift. I could try to pinch higher into the wind, that's going to slow my boat speed down. But I'll sail closer to the wind and maybe make this mark, but I lose boat speed. So I say go ugly early, let's tack, get it out of the way, be able to make the mark and we'll come back around. Now I'm on port, the um, Spanish boat is on starboard. They have right away, but we didn't really have a conflict because we were far in front of them there. You can see the rule 10 still applies, but it was red, meaning they had right away over me. So I tacked back over and now we can take the mark easily. Fortunately for me, 
the Swiss boat couldn't make the mark either, so they had to make another tack. And now you'll see as they fall off behind me, and we'll be ahead of them by mm, a good four or five boat lengths, maybe more. We round the first mark and get ready to hoist our spinnakers. With this wind strength, the Swiss boat should do better at sailing downwind with the spinnakers, we'll see. But as we round the mark, Switzerland is 11.3 seconds behind after the first leg. You can see that rule 12 applies. This is uh, when boats are on the same tack. The overtaking boat, which in this case, if Switzerland caught up to me, they'd be overtaking. Or the windward boat has to stay clear of the other boat. So here I have right away. Right now, I'm just trying to sail my boat as fast as I can to stay ahead of the Swiss boat. We have a fairly comfortable lead after the first leg. I've got my crew sitting on the side of the boat trying to sail it flat. Give me uh, some more power as we sail downwind. Heading toward the second mark there. You can see the Swiss boat off in the distance. Not looking too good for the Swiss. But at least their sails are working and the skipper's handling it well, so we'll see how this all works out in the end. We drive over onto what is a port tack now. Just trying to keep our boat speed up. You can see by the mini map on the bottom left that still have the right of way over the Swiss boat. But at this point, we're so far ahead, you know, there's really not going to be much of a conflict. See, as I pan back out here, how much of a lead we actually have over them. But the good news is they're sailing their boat. They're not stalling. They're not sailing around in circles. I just wish it was a little bit closer competition. We're getting close to the point where we can jive again be able to make this mark. And there you have it. Be able to get to this mark easily on this heading. Time to drop the spinnaker, place the chip so that we can come around this mark with a full head of steam as we reach for the third mark. So we have just rounded the mark. You can see the time up in the top right corner next to my boat reads zero. And when the Swiss boat rounds the mark, we'll know how far behind they are. Remember last mark, they were 11.3 seconds behind. Yes, they're sailing well, but they are well behind. Like I said, they're not looking too good for this series. And they have fallen to 23.25 seconds behind. And we picked up an additional 12 seconds on that downwind leg. Now we're going to leave this next mark, the third mark, to port. And then hoist the spinnaker for our dash to the finish line. Because this is a uh, basically a beam reach right now, or but not really a beam reach, almost a, almost a beam reach. We can make this mark without any problems. We can sail closer to the wind if we needed to. We could fall off. Regardless, we're going to make this mark. And again, so is the Swiss boat. So we still have to sail fast. A big crime right now would be if I touched that buoy as I round it. If any part of my crew or my boat touches the buoy, I have to serve a 360 degree penalty. But we round it easily. Send the crew forward to hoist the spinnaker and now it's going to be a downhill run to the finish. Just rounded the mark. Let's see how far behind Switzerland is. They're getting to the mark now and they are 
20.69 seconds behind, so they actually picked up three seconds on that last leg. But it ain't gonna be enough. Now in sailboat racing, you can see on the bottom left those two white dots indicating the finish line. You can sail anywhere between those lines and you have finished the race. However, I've noticed that the AI skippers will always sail for the middle, which kind of gives them a disadvantage. And in order to make things a little bit more equal, I am also going to be sailing for that arrow that's bobbing right there. It may be a shorter course to sail for one, to, to sail to one end or another, but the AI skipper is always going to tack the sail to that point. Just to make things a little bit more even, I am going to, from now on, do the same thing. So there we are. We crossed the finish line in just over 11 minutes. We are the Melge Cup champions. Switzerland put up a gallant fight on this last round, but our skipper, crew, and boat was just too much for them to handle. So now we're going to go back to the marina, open up some champagne, and toast our victory, toss the skipper and crew into the drink, which is a sailing tradition. There will be some serious celebrating tonight. The USA sweeps the finals two to nothing and has a streak of 14 straight victories throughout this regatta after a first round loss to, I think it was Australia. So that's my coverage of Virtual Skipper 5's Melges Cup. Hope you enjoyed the series. I'll be coming, on, uh, coming up with some more sailing action in different series later, but I also want to do some other type of simulators as well. We thoroughly trounced our competition, and we won the cup. Partly because of AI programming, but I think we sailed pretty good. We did make some mistakes along the way, and hopefully you enjoyed this series. But having sailed this uh, series for a long time now, I have some thoughts about the game. First off, the graphics are tremendous. They're as good as I've seen in any game I've played. The waves are incredible. I really feel like I'm out on the water when I play this game. The boat physics seems to be excellent as well. I like the wake and the bow wave and the splash as I slice through the water. And the heel and acceleration seems about right. Now I've sailed this series as the skipper of the USA boat. And quite frankly, it's the best boat in the fleet. If I want to make this more of a challenge, I would have to sail one of the other boats. But quite frankly, I want to sail as the USA skipper. It would be nice if this game allowed me to adjust the competition settings so that I can still sail uh, the USA boat and give myself more of a challenge. Now, the AI, as we've seen, as in all computer games that have artificial intelligence, leaves a lot to be desired. I realize it's a very difficult proposition to program AI behavior, and in general, I commend the makers of Virtual Skipper 5 for their efforts. However, artificial intelligent decisions, skill, and ability to sail in high winds is severely lacking, at least in this Melge Cup series. That was a major deterrent to my enjoying this game. I'll try to sail in the future using the ACC class boats, and hopefully the AI skippers won't have the same problems with their spinnakers as they did in th this class. In fairness to the game, I believe it was designed primarily to be an online game to be played against real players, and this whining would not actually apply to them. But I also feel that if you're going to put AI skippers in the game, I do expect them to be better than what they turned out to be. And it was a major disappointment and detriment to playing the game. Now, one of the another nice features of this game is the ability to design your own course. When I do that, I get to set the conditions, and then I can have the winds be whatever I want and the tide be whatever I want, so it's not as much of a factor. However, um, it doesn't allow me to set up a regatta or a cup series. It's simply a single race deal and not a series. However, 
you can also design a race for up to seven artificial intelligence skippers so you can have a, a race against the fleet. Now when you do this, the normal ranking system or the handicap seems to go away and all boats seem to be equal. Now one downside to this is that you cannot select which opponents you race against in the fleet race. They are chosen randomly by the game. So if you want to design a fleet and race, say, the same race against the same uh, skippers over and over again, you can't do that because different boats show up for each race. This is very disappointing, and I wish this could be added to the game somehow so I could design my own regattas. Overall, I give this game a 7 plus out of 10 or a B plus. It's a very nice game. Could be better, but what game can't be? I'll definitely be playing it again, and I do highly recommend it. So give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you like. I appreciate the subscribers that have come on board so far. Please leave comments so I can make my videos better. We'll see you on the water. And once again, thanks for watching.